Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Curlian in the five minute pool on ICC. Uh, let's play a Queen C2 Slav against Curlian. This is one line I've just been experimenting with a little bit, and he plays A6. Okay, let's go Bishop G5 and attack that Knight on F6. This is a solid player. I've played him many times. So Bishop F4, Bishop H4. Let's play Bishop F4. I feel like my Bishop could be more useful, more valuable on that diagonal. And all right, so they advance B5. Now, do I play take on on the on d5, or do I play c5 and play for the space advantage? Taking on d5 would be much simpler, but we have kind of a exchange Slav structure. I'm going to do that, and then maybe get in knight c3 or a4. a4 comes to mind. Possibly e3 first. a4 looks kind of like the way to go. Let's do that. So try to force this pawn to a decision. I get the sense that they take and I take with the queen that that slightly favors white. Black's already moved this a6 pawn. Maybe I can cause some issues. b4 instead. So the point there is if I take, then they have e5. I could play queen b7. That gets a little murky. Take there. Take a8. They give a check on b4. Don't know if I trust that line completely. <laughs> Hmm. There's also just knight c6. I'm just going to play e3. I'll develop simply. Knight e5. Trying to preempt their knight move, their knight development. Knight bd2. Hmm. Could also play a5. Let's play a5. So. Just kind of stopping them from ever playing a5 to rescue this pawn. And they offer a bishop trade, okay. We'll take that. We'll just develop. Now I'm expecting that knight to come to c6, and the middle game might revolve around whether... Black's b4 pawn is weaker than my a5 pawn, and vice versa. I do like this pawn on a5, though, because it also creates a target on a6 for my light square bishop. So I feel like that's something I could look forward to. For the next few moves, I'm just going to complete my development, hopefully. Black will likely do the same. They need to castle. They need to get this knight moved. Probably to c6, maybe to d7, but I suspect they want it on c6 to attack a5 and tie down my rook. I'm not sure of the consequences of that queen takes b4 move. We'll go back and look at it. That was just a practical determination by me. I just I wasn't sure myself how that was going to shake out, so I didn't um, I didn't uh, play for queen takes b4 e5 queen b7 or just queen takes b4 knight c6. Here it may not be bad to play rook c8. And if castles, there is bishop c2, but I could have pinned them maybe in that case. You never know. Okay, let's just castle now. Probably rook fc1 will be my next move, depending upon what they play. If I could play rook fc1, rook c5, I think that would be a nice situation. If black takes on f3, I'll take with the bishop so as not to damage my pawns. If rook fc8, I can safely play rook fc1, I believe. Because if knight takes a5, I have rook takes c8, rook takes c8, rook takes a5. Uh, they check on c1, though. Hmm. Maybe I need this move first. Even that move, I'm not so sure, because the queen is still eyeing h2. But it'll be helpful in the long run. I didn't want to play g3, because that would weaken my light squares around my king. As long as this bishop survives, I think it's better to play h3 than g3. It's not easy to find a move here for black, though, so maybe just making a couple quick decisions like this is okay. All right, so I said I was going to take with the bishop, and I'm probably sticking with that. Hmm. Here, I feel like I might get in that maneuver I was, I was discussing. Do I play bishop e2 first? Let's play bishop e2, actually, and attack this pawn. All right, so let's go here now. 
That knight is pinned. It can't move. He would lose the rook on c8. Wow, and black is lashing out. Hmm. But now I think just taking and then playing rook c5 should be good. Because again, due to that pin. B2 is covered by my queen. This queen looks active, but what are you going to do about the d5 pawn? Looks like black is having to shed some material, it seems to me. If this rook goes to d7, they lose a6, remember. b2 will be a tender square. Like, I can't play... Well, maybe I could play queen takes d5 next, but they would have queen takes b2 possibly in reply. I'd probably take on d5 with the rook if it came to that. So black needs to find a way to give the pawn, but still have a decent position. There I can just take and then take b4. Check. So let's do that. There's no rook b7. Okay. Um, bishop f3. Eh, kind of want my bishop here, though. Let's come to this square. Attacking d5, also preparing rook c1. Don't think I need my queen on the b file much. Let's take the file. B4, queen d4 comes to mind. Queen d4 looks pretty good. Let's do that. Rook c7. I can just trade and then take on a6 though. Ah, uh, they have uh, they have queen takes a5 in that case. Hmm. So trade trade b4 maybe. Knight c6. It's got to be good for me. So we'll just protect this. I want to keep this as a weakness. I don't want that running away anywhere. Check. Hmm. King h2 or bishop f1. Hmm, hmm. I think king h2, even though they have queen here. Check. I think this is still a better idea. f4 maybe? Nah, f4 is kind of weakening. Queen f4? Yeah, let's do queen f4. Gotta watch the time. He's up a little bit on the clock now, but the extra pawn is worth it. Check, and then queen b6, maybe? Check. So offer a trade, which he can't really accept because he loses a6 after all is said and done. Okay, let's take that. Queen d4 check is coming, too. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Uh, g4, g4. Ah, that weakens my king quite a bit, though. All right, let's just do this. I'm going to bring my, my bishop all the way back to f1, like is the plan. Really got to watch that time, though. If this knight moves, I have queen d4, just trading and winning instantly. Okay, so this is going to win the game. <clears throat> Get b5 in. Bishop d7 and then b6. Time warning. Immediately hereafter. Yeah, b6 and the knight is trapped. Nothing to be done for black. All right, and he resigns. All right, so uh, a pretty smooth positional victory, I think. And the only struggle was uh, consolidating that extra pawn and converting it to a win at the end. But let's take a look at that. So I found this queen c2 slot or queen b3. They're kind of related. This is a good line to uh, skirt some of the main theory in the Slav and semi-Slav. And... I know that there are some equalizing paths for black in this, but 
as a practical weapon, it's probably at least as good as the uh, the main lines. So a6 and bishop g5. a6 is not a move I've seen before. Usually people are taking on c4 and playing g6. That's another popular reply when you get a slav grunfeld hybrid. But a6, not as common. So I just played bishop g5, attacking the, the knight. Now bishop f5, I do have to move the queen now because of discovered attacks like knight g3. But as a bonus, I'm attacking this pawn. So here there was a slight debate whether to take or play c5. Let me turn on the engine. Engine says takes, but it also says black is okay here. So I played a4, looking to weaken their structure. So black can take. Yeah, I was Check. probably going to take with a queen. And the computer thinks it's roughly equal. Bishop d7, probably had come here. e6, maybe not much doing for white. This resembles an exchange slav, the structure at least, and it's hard to prove a theoretical advantage with a symmetrical slav structure like this. But my opponent did not take on a4, they played b4. Now, so if I take, I couldn't figure out what happens if e5 for one thing. I saw that maybe this was possible, but it looks really risky to give up my bishop and kind of abandon my king. Check. And indeed, the computer confirms here. What's wrong with knight bd2? Take, take, Check. take, take. Queen b6 is killer. Defending the knight, also attacking d4 and b2. My coordination looks non-existent here. I can't even play rook b1 to defend that pawn because of this. Okay, good thing I avoided that. I sensed that this was <laughs> possibly risky. I mean, I even thought like just knight c6 here should give black a good position too. But uh, e5 would probably be the more brutal solution. So good I didn't just grab the pawn. So I played e3, they went e6, and then I played a5. So this move really pestered black in the long run because it fixed this pawn on, an a on the a6 square, on a light square, in line with my bishop. Bishop d6, I just traded, then played knight here. Still, the position is totally fine for black. It should be tolerable. Here I thought rook c8 might be a, a plan, intending after castles to play bishop c2, but I do have this move now, and they can't take the queen because of Check. this, and I think I should get a big Check. edge out of this. This bishop seems kind of misplaced, and yeah, I can go and attack it. This isn't really what black wants. A6 is still a target in the long run. So they played knight c6 instead, but now the position is stabilizing, and it seems to me that white has an advantage. Yeah, curiously, it turned out to be more so this pawn than the b4 pawn. The b4 pawn was also weak, but I think the, real, the thing that really hurts black is, is this pawn. Because it ties down their rook, and my bishop is always a move away from capturing that guy. Yeah, this is kind of an unpleasant position to play. Maybe rook fc1 is slightly more accurate, but um, there was a line I didn't like with rook fc1. The engine says it's possible. Let's calculate this before I look and see what the engine says. So if rook fc1, I didn't like the fact that black might have knight takes a5, and then if, if rook takes a5, then rook takes c1 check. So the line would run rook fc1, knight takes a5, rook takes c8 check, rook takes c8, rook takes a5, rook c1 check. And then I thought if bishop d1 to block the check, that they would have bishop c2. But maybe I can just take on c2 with my queen then. Queen takes c2, rook takes c2, bishop takes c2, and white has a rook, a bishop, and a knight for a queen in that line, for a queen and a pawn. That should be good. And if queen c7, they, I have rook c5 holding my rook and attacking their queen, defending my bishop as well. Let's check that line. Rook fc1, so I was worried about this, but check. take, 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 check. check. Yeah, I didn't look much further than this because I saw bishop c2 was possible. But now calculating in here and having that hint of what the engine was showing, that rook fc1 was okay, it's possible to calculate this line. Yeah, and... I have lost the queen, but I've gained a rook plus two minor pieces for the queen and a pawn. And as I said, if black tries to attack these two pieces by playing this, then I have rook c5 and white should be winning this. 
if I can coordinate my, my three pieces, I, I win this position. Hmm. Well, that's a good example of calculating to the end. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard in a blitz game, as always. But uh, if I'd looked a little bit further after bishop c2, and not just taken it at face value that black wins my queen here, but instead uh, actually counted the material and gone a couple moves more, I would have seen this line. And I wouldn't have wasted time with h3. Which also is not terrible, but rook fc1 is probably more constructive. So black took on f3. I guess they didn't see much of a future for their light square bishop, and maybe we're trying to deflect this bishop from attacking a6. But still, I think the position is difficult for black. I've got all these natural moves, and always they're tied down to this. I can use the c5 square. I can double up my rooks then. Black is pinned down the c-file. Yeah, and I suspect black should just be patient here and try to hold out, try to keep these weaknesses under control, but this is what so many players will do is they they lash out once they have a statically worse position. It's a it's a strong temptation. Like a computer would never never play e5, but to a human you kind of start to panic. You think, well, I have no counterplay, I gotta search for something, I gotta find some way to cause problems for my opponent. The engine says just play knight e7, offer a trade. Check. Rook c1. Yeah, it's more of the same. Still an edge for white. These weaknesses are more tangible than a5. So take, take, I get rook c5 in, and I started feeling Check. very good about my position. It should be winning now. I'm up the pawn. I have a better position still. There's this weak pawn on d5. Queen d4 might have been more accurate here, also hitting the rook and the pawn. I wanted to defend a5 so that I could free up for rook c1. Let's just see if there were any other turning points after this. So black encourages another trade of rooks. I wanted to grab a6, but then I would lose a5. So I played b4 for that reason. Check. Check. I probably burned a little bit too much time right around here. I was debating between like king h2 and bishop f1. Probably both are good. I don't think they alter the assessment too much. I spent some time looking at after king h2, like what happens if they play like queen c2 attacking my bishop, and if the bishop moves the pawn behind it, is lost behind it. I think I was thinking this move would be a good reply. Try to attack a6 and defend the bishop. Check. But black played check. I played queen f4 looking for a trade. Here, check. I went check. And queen b6. Yeah, I think the trade of queens would be a lost endgame for black because this pawn's going to run. Let's just see that. Knight c6, take. If take here, I have bishop b5, and that knight is not going to be able to assist in the defense. So knight b8, bishop b5. This knight is corralled. Yeah, this is a win for white. Black has trouble approaching the pawns as well. So queen c3, and I took on a6. I could have traded Check. right away, but I felt like taking on a6 and the trade would still be there. Knight f5 was a little annoying. I almost played g4 here, but I'm glad I didn't because that exposes my king. I thought on g4 they might play, what move did I think, queen d2? Maybe giving up the knight and trying to come here, Check. but I see now that even this probably wouldn't work because my bishop controls f1, so I don't believe black has a perpetual. Check. Although there'd be a lot of annoying checks. And Check. You never know with the time situation I might have lost this. So queen c5 on the other hand. Check. They gave a check. I played king g1. And here I was ready if they played like queen a1 to block with the bishop. But they played this and queen d4 is definitely the easiest way to win. Just get the queens off the board. Black no longer has any counterplay. And I can look forward to just advancing my pawns. Which are unstoppable. Yeah, and black's knight is trapped. So they soon resign. So a pretty smooth strategic game, I think. And even if my opening didn't yield much, it got a position that I felt comfortable in. Static advantage, and I think once we settle into this middle game with the bishop versus the knight and black having the a6 weakness, it's a position that white can play for a win with hardly any risk, really. So hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.